Welcome to the Bible Forum. It's Warren Sprouse. It is June 3rd, 2018, and we are getting ready to start the Bible Forum for this week, this edition. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of things that uh, we're going to be sharing with you. Uh, we spend about two hours looking at life from a biblical perspective. We take a look at the things that are happening in the news. We hold up the biblical lens to see through that what they are really about. And we try to solve all the world's problems in two hours or less. We love having you here. Uh, you are live on the program and there will be some things going on that you won't see later on when I get done editing everything the way it's supposed to be. Uh, there are several ways to watch the program. Uh, you can do it on the internet through our website, thebibleforum.net. Uh, you can watch it from our Facebook page, uh, and those two are live. Uh, throughout the week, the segments that have been cut up are posted on the website, thebibleforum.net. They're in this little screen that's on the front. Uh, they are also uh, uploaded to Facebook, uploaded to YouTube, and you can see everything that we did except for the stuff that's in between. And you can do that for 24 hours a day as long as your eyes can stay awake. The Bible Forum is a faith ministry. Uh, we survive on the generosity of viewers. Uh, we would appreciate it if you could help us in some way. If you want to make a commitment, uh, a, a commitment to $30 a month uh, for at least a year, uh, we will send you a shirt. <laughs> I know that's not the same thing, uh, but it's a reminder. It's, it's something, uh, but really for any kind of commitment, uh, we have gray, we have black, it says the Bible form. Uh, you tell me your size and, and I'll say, send them to you. You can use PayPal or you can send a personal check. Make the check out to Alternatives. Uh, that is the umbrella organization for the Bible form. Uh, if you want to mail it, uh, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll give you the address. The uh, world is in a turmoil. I don't know if you've noticed or not. And it helps to have wealthy friends. It was reported this week that uh, former President Obama signed what one entertainment industry source said could be a $50 million contract with Netflix. Uh, now it's being reported that a friend, Ted Sarandos, or Sarandos, uh, a major Obama, Obama donor through the years, uh, was, quote, instrumental in convincing Netflix to sign the Obamas to a multi-year agreement. That was listed for us in the New York Post this past week. Uh, the odds are that Mr. Sarandos put up some money <clears throat> or he has some tremendous influence with Netflix. And when we see some of the programming that's going to come out, it will be uh, of the very liberal sort. Some of it will be political, not all of it. Um, a lot of it will just be social kinds of things but a lot of different stuff. Uh, it's always interesting to me how former presidents um, fare. Uh, they seem to maintain uh, some pretty lucrative friendships and some other things. They, they don't, I don't know that we've ever had a poor uh, former president, with the exception maybe of Harry Truman, uh, but beginning with uh, the 1960s, and moving forward, these guys have always bounced on up on their feet and had a lot of money at the end. I guess politics is uh, a good investment on some level. We have a story, it's, it's, a, it's an evolving story out of Great Britain about a journalist, his name is Tommy Robinson, and he was arrested, put in jail, about a week or so ago, uh, he was outside on the 
sidewalk in front of the courthouse and he was streaming live on Facebook, no doubt with his phone, uh, streaming the comings and goings of the alleged members of an Islamic child sex grooming act, a gang, I'm sorry, uh, as they come, came and went in and out of the building during their trial. Uh, the crime that he committed was simply that the judge didn't want this to happen. Now, it's Great Britain. I do not know what their legal system is like. Over here, we would be screaming bloody murder. Uh, Robinson is characterized as a right-wing activist, and he defied the government ban. That's the way they worded it. Although in the printing and the explanation of it all, it wasn't so much the government, it was the judge. Uh, but again, maybe the judge speaks for the government, and that's, I don't know. Um, not a free citizen of Great Britain with rights on a public street. Uh, you can't have that. Uh, this week uh, was filled with all sorts of follow-up explanations, defenses, and so forth, but the reality is the judge was seeking to influence both the outcome and public opinion regarding these folks. And if it could be done in secret, then the social impact, the condemnation, perhaps would have been limited, at least organized, schmoozed, massaged in some way. Over in Spain, Spain's Maritime Rescue Service says it has rescued 366 migrants attempting the dangerous crossing of the Mediterranean Sea this past weekend, not the one we're in last week. The service says that it has rescued, intercepted uh, 73 migrants uh, traveling in four small boats last Sunday. Uh, adding to the 293 migrants it pulled from nine vessels on Saturday. In the larger picture, there are tens of thousands of these folks called migrants, people who are attempting to reach Spain and, and other Southern European nations, and they do this every year by crossing the Mediterranean in smugglers' boats. Most of the boats are unfit for open water, and thousands of these people have died. And they've died largely because European leaders can't see past their noses. These people are playing politics with desperate people's lives. And you want to know why? You don't know how. Well, simply by implying or outright stating that they sympathize with the plight of these escaping individuals, these people who are the results of totalitarianism. By mentioning that, by sympathizing and publicizing, they're encouraging these people to come. They are desperate people. They will try anything. There was a day when people like that would be protected. Otherwise, reasonably intelligent people would be careful what they said, knowing, yes, that it's a very horrible place where they're living, but it is dangerous to go out on open water over the Mediterranean in smugglers' boats. Uh, you know, that isn't a good thing. They are welcoming them in. That encourages. But they do so much more. In the case of Germany, it has been said recently that they need more workers. And they are willing to put these people at risk by openly encouraging them to come. They're not asking them to come. They're just saying, we'll, we'll take you in if you do. And they're willing to disrupt their society in order to get more. But by whatever definition, these people are not migrants. They're refugees from the ravaging effect of Islam. The former manager of an event center owned by a Catholic church is suing the church because the church 
had a morals clause in their contract. The morals clause banned any LGBT events. And this dispute started about three years ago when a group of African-American LGBT activists asked to use this place. It's called the Ambridge Event Center in Portland, Oregon. The application was turned down because the center is owned by the Holy Rosary Catholic Church. The Morals Clause would not allow them to use it. Well, the manager of this center, a man by the name of Alan Peters, apologized to the LGBT organization and said, quote, he would update the center's policies to affirm compliance with the law and would retrain his employees. This for-profit company soon hired an LGBT employee as well. Now, Courthouse News is reporting that Ambridge is suing the church because soon after the conflict began with the black LGBT group, the church terminated the holiday investors contract to manage the facility. Might be something about trust. <laughs> These are the rules. Can you live with them? And you can say what you want about the Roman Catholic Church, and I do, but they got this one right. The Bible clearly condemns homosexuality in any form you can imagine. Not because the book is homophobic, but because it is God-ordered. It is a disorderly society that allows for these oddities. The God who made us made us male and female for a reason. In the book of Genesis, we read how that so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. No she-males. Later on in chapter 5, he says, Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. Now that's strange, isn't it? Strange wording. But when God created Adam, Eve was already in there, in there. I don't understand it, but he took a piece of Adam and crafted her, so they are one. In chapter 6, it says, And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee, and they shall be male and female. That's the only way we breed. It's the only way any animal Anybody, anything in the animal kingdom can breed. You don't peel them off and say, oh, there's a new ant. In chapter 7, they went in to the ark. They went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in, talking about Noah. In the New Testament, Jesus reinforces all of this in his teachings on marriage and divorce in the uh, synoptic Gospels, at least, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Uh, you can read Mark 10, for example, and he explains all this. There's no such thing as a boy mistakenly born male and should have been a female, and he can change his biology and put on female clothes and have a, a surgery and take hormones, and he'll be a girl. It's never going to work. And it doesn't work when the girls try to be guys either. Uh, they seem to say that they are more comfortable in that. But I'm telling you, they're not. <laughs> it's just not like that. What we have are people, male and female, who are born feeling, acting, thinking more like the other gender. Boys who feel more feminine and, and act it out. And girls who are more masculine and, and act that out. And that's not new. 
That's been going on as long as I've been on the planet, probably as long as people have been on the planet. It doesn't mean that somehow God got it wrong and that we have to have something in the middle. But we're going to try to do that. It's an illustration of how far we as a culture have moved away from the absolute standards of righteousness, of that which is right, just because we feel like it. We're going to come back. We've got a lot of other things we're going to look at. We're going to look at the continuing saga of Paige Patterson and the Southern Baptist Convention. I've gotten several re responses to what I have said heretofore. Uh, but the news keeps coming out. Things keep adding and changing. We're going to go back and look at it a little bit again uh, in the next segment. So stay tuned.